welcome back. You're still watching Ways. So there's a lot of buzz surrounding the concept of personal branding amongst entrepreneurs. These days, it seems like just creating a successful business is not enough. You, as a business owner, must be just as famous as your brand, with examples like Sir Richard Branson, and, of course, Elon Musk, and uh, with Tesla and SpaceX. It makes many wonder whether it is the person behind the business or the company itself that creates success. Well, maybe it's a little bit of both. Kemi Onaba and George Joseph is an associate partner with McKenzie and Company, a global management consulting firm where she serves public and social sector clients across West Africa. She's a proud alumnus of Covenant University and recent president. <laughs> and also holds an MBA from INSEAD in France, where she was elected valedictorian for over 490 of her classmates in the graduating class of 2016. Welcome, and thank, thank you for you. joining us. Thank you. Congratulations so you. again. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. We're thank following you, you online. <laughs> uh, it was, I was quite surprised at how outside of the core alumni community that whole thing went yeah. uh, but very excited at least we've shown Nigeria how to do elections exactly um, yeah. in a digitized way yeah. <laughs> it's digitized. possible yeah um, yes. and we're hoping that you know Nigeria will catch up with that so and since yeah. we're talking personal branding that was a very 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 clear picture mm. of it just clearly painted the picture of how powerful personal branding is. plays you know the role it plays yeah. you know when it comes to successes yeah. so tell us about personal branding and how far you have come with it because you have successfully built a brand online which is quite interesting because <laughs> <laughs> um, I still one of the questions I still ask myself is is my brand online consistent with who I am offline? And I think for me, when I think of personal branding, it's really around consistency and congruence. Um, we have a lot of situations where people say, you're a different person online versus when they meet you in real life. And for me, it's really around how do I make sure that it is consistent. If I decide, as, you know, um, as I said, if you say, I want to be known for warmth, or I want to be known for excellence, or I want to be known for humor, that has to come through in every single interaction with you. So it means when you're writing your post on social media, it must radiate warmth. Or when you are posting on LinkedIn, for example, there should be no typos because you are saying I'm an excellent person and every output that I produce, written or spoken, has to be excellent. It means that you know your page on Instagram, for example, will not only have funny captions, but will also have funny videos or funny things that you know really emit humor. And so for me, personal branding is really around first having a conversation with yourself about what you want to be known for and ensuring there's consistency in everything that you say or do along those lines, online, offline, across multiple platforms, uh, wherever you are. And so for me, it's really around consistency about who you want to be. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, Kenny. Fantastic. So, you know, reading up on you and going on, you have a blog, there's a page, you have a blog, yes, right? Okay. And so I read about Kemi. So there's career girl, there's speaker, there's yeah. traveler, there's blogger, and I'm thinking, okay, so this is Kemi with many talents. Amazing and well done Thank on you. what you're doing. And so, in terms of when you say Congress, so I hear you, so how do you bring all of that together? You know, these are starkly different areas, but you know, what are you known for? What, how, do you separate, how do you separate each of those personalities, mm. if, if you like? Which is another interesting question. <laughs> because a lot of the times, and at the point when I was going to get on social media, I'm a bit of a late adopter. So I was one of the last people to get a Blackberry. <laughs> and I only, exactly, I only got on Instagram late 2015. Uh, when most people were already there That's for two, three years, you know, yeah. so at the point when I was going to even get on social media my, The question I had to myself was what do I want to be known for and one of my friends was like you have to answer that question Otherwise, you would just be another random page uh, on Instagram and what I really wanted to be known for was inspiration Right, and so inspiration cuts across many different things. When I started writing about travel, I really wanted to inspire people who had a green passport and didn't have you know any exposure to really let them know they could travel. 
and you didn't have to be from a wealthy background or have a blue or red passport as an alternative, but you could take this green passport and see the world. And that's, you know, the, the theme of the things I write around travel. And so even when I do blog around travel, it's really showing people how, what are the hacks? How do I save? When I want to go on group trips, what are the things I look out for? When I go to countries, how do I try to see two, three countries at the same time? And it's really just inspiring people to want to see the world. And there are quite a number of people who are now on their 20 before 20, 25 before whatever. <laughs> uh, I've kind of stopped. I'm like, you know, no pressure. But 30 before 30 was easy, and I thought it was a good milestone. Yes, I remember that. It was a good you milestone to, to, to choose. Again? I wanted to go to 30 countries by the time I was 30. Right. By the time I was 30, I think I'd done 35 or something. Wow. So it was That's actually quite exciting. Great. And I know people who have been inspired to get up and right. go see the world. Right. Um, around career, again, it's a question of you don't really need connections. You can build a career just by being excellent at whatever you do. I don't really talk about the details of my work due to client confidentiality. But I make sure that you know every time I show up in a career setting, I'm showing up right. I'm showing up correct. Um, and really inspiring people to take charge of their careers. Okay. I started as computer science. I've made two, three major moves. You can do it. You're not a tree, mm. really. Exactly. You know, you don't have to be tied to, to what, what you studied what, in yes, school. Um, and just life in general. I think for me, the reason why I started writing about all the different areas of my life was uh, with my mentor, maybe about seven years ago, uh, she recommended me for a fellowship. And we realized that I had nothing else in my life apart from church and work. And she's like, that is so boring. You know, you're young, you have all this time, you don't have a family. What are you doing with your time? So I just had this triangular life, you know, work, home, church, church. repeat. Work, home, church, Which every week. For a lot of, nice for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then she said, you have to be interesting. What is it about you? What, what are you doing in terms of community service? What are you doing in terms of hobbies? What skills are you picking up? What, be an interesting human being. And so I show all these different areas of my life to really inspire people, people. to live a full life. Like, don't wait. I mean, I recently got married, which is great, and I'm very excited about it. But it's like, thank you. You don't, don't wait till you're married. Don't wait for something before you actually start living. Do in life, just live just do and do many Love different it. things, you know, <laughs> exactly. You've been, yeah. you've been able to create this personal brand in such a wonderful way. So if I may ask you a question, how powerful can a personal brand impact a business? I think a personal brand is one of the most powerful ways to really, really grow your business, especially because now people are not content with just seeing the logo, as you said. Exactly. They want to know the person behind the brown. Mm. Authenticity is something that this generation Thank is you. really looking for. Thank you. So if you are selling um, skin whitening products, for example, okay. is your skin whitened? <laughs> you know, why should I use your products if you're not using your products? Exactly. I, and I use that very loosely. Mm. If you're selling fitness, are you fit? You better look fit. Exactly. Uh, if you're it. selling beauty, are you beautiful? Like I want to, a lot of us are really demanding authenticity behind the products and the services that we get today to make sure that it's, you know, it's consistent. Um, and so there's more demands for knowing the face behind the brand. And so that personal brand really is important. It has to be Again, consistent with what you're selling, what you're offering, the value you're giving to people. And we want to see that it has worked for you, you know, so we can also adopt uh, and take that in. The other reason why personal brand is actually quite important for businesses is your investors don't invest in the idea. I've been, uh, you know, very privy to a lot of deals that happen uh, in terms of entrepreneurs who are looking for money to scale. And really, anyone can have an idea. What investors are investing in is the person. Do we think that this person has the resilience to push through when the government policies go crazy? Does this person have the resilience to push through when competition comes and not abandon this project midway and say they're done? Does this person have integrity? Since you're talking about um, um, resilience and integrity, what about confidence? Does confidence play any particular role in um, brand, personal branding? Absolutely. Um, I, people say, my works will speak for me. And I say, well, your works don't have a mouth, unfortunately. <laughs> you must project yourself. You have to be the one to speak, mm. really. You know, a product can sit here. If no one tells me this, you know, drink is delicious, I'm not 
likely to try, to try it. it. And I mean, for all it's worth, it's pretty, but it doesn't say anything to me. Um, and so when people say, oh, my work will speak for me, I think it's a big lie. I think you have to speak. And a lot of what you say, the credibility with which you deliver what you say is really followed by confidence. Okay. I love that. Um, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Nasa. I love what you just said now. And I'll drink this now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank Please you for enjoy. <laughs> you know, because people they say people trust people, not the brand. And when we want to build um, a product, like what you just, the analysis you just gave, we, I would try this product based on the fact that I trust you. So how do you build that trust when it comes to, because you've mentioned something, you've mentioned expertise. Yeah that you must make sure you know your onions. Because I see a lot of people now, they're jumping up and down, I want to be an influencer, I want to do this. <laughs> but they are not ready to put in that work. And there yeah. are people, young, young people out there, they, they, want to, they want to actually make decent living, but they don't know how to. Mm -hmm. Can you walk them through maybe, this, 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 maybe like simple steps they can begin to take to become that expert in that brand? So they begin to build that trust. What are the basic things they need to do first to buy that customer trust? Then mm. they can now become that expert that people will now go to, that now eventually translates into money in their pockets. In their pockets. Yeah. It's interesting. What you say is actually quite interesting because it's the same whether it's a business or a career. True. You know, you, you increase your earning potential by being known for something. For something. Yeah. And a lot of jobs actually come by referrals. True. So people will refer you to another organization because they know that you've done something. What you're trying to establish is track record at the end of the day, positive track record, because there's negative track record as well. <laughs> if we know that you're consistently flaking, we will consistently not refer, refer you. you. <laughs> because we know that you will consistently fail. Flake. Exactly. Um, and so it's really how do you build positive track record? One of the ways for young people, especially when they're just graduating, is to make sure they use their university years. So internships is a way to build positive track record. Yeah. Like, I need to be able to know that you've done some work before and you've done it well. That's one way. The other way is to uh, experiment, right? You can never know if something is good for you or not if you don't try it. So experiment, you might fail, but at least you've learned a new way of doing it. And document these things. A lot of us don't have receipts. The only receipts we have are on Twitter, where we want to drag people for something they've done to us. But you really need to have receipts for your work. Make sure that when you do work for someone and they say, this is amazing, ask them if they can write a quick, Quick message That's and it. ask them if it's okay yeah, if you, yeah. if if you, you can, can post it. Post it. Right. More credible if it has their name on it because I can write anything about myself so and put anonymous. You know, yeah. part of the things that will actually make people trust it is if they know it's coming from a real human being. Mm. And if that person has credibility, then you even, you know, take some of their social capital and use it to build up on yours. Okay. So keep receipts of the work that you do. But the fundamental thing is you have to do good work. It's the only way anybody will refer you. And there are people who will refer you and say, at your own risk, you know, this person, they can be good, they can be bad. I'm not sure what part of them you're going to get, but be aware that when they deliver, they deliver well. And when they don't deliver, it's chaos. So really, for me, the big thing is positive track record, consistent track record. And things go wrong. To be honest, am I on my A game all the time? No. And I don't think anyone should be under that pressure okay. to be perfect all the time. But when things go wrong, it should be the exception, not the norm. And have an explanation for it. Mm -hmm. And don't just you know, take people for granted. Let, let yeah. me touch on something you said. And it's about um, people being their own mouthpieces and don't wait for your work to speak for yourself. And I could easily say, oh, maybe it's half and half. Because then there's also the issue of a lot of people feeling like, why do I have to? Doesn't that look like I'm showing off? So where do I draw the line? How do I strategically, you know, put out information and also just have my work sort of corroborate what I put out? So what would you say about, you know, how, how do you make that How do you make sure you're not bragging? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough and I struggle with it as well. Um, but facts are facts. Well, the truth is that, <laughs> I'm sorry, Nasa, uh, this social media age, I think if you do not brag, <laughs> you be because now is the age for bragging. It's the time for bragging. If but you I, are not blowing your your own, 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 your own
right? Because yes. it has a negative, a negative, negative exactly connotation. connotation. It's associated with pride and all of that. Exactly. Let's, let's just talk about promotion. Self-promotion. Self-promotion mm -hmm. or promotion of the work that you do. And I don't see anything wrong with it, to be honest. So, for example, if I want to be, um, I'm trying to build a profile to be a speaker and I want to be invited to um, other, you know, global platforms. If I put this interview up, I'm not bragging. It happened. I was here. I had this Very conversation. True. I imagined that I added value, Abs you know. Absolutely. And I will put it up and say, oh, I had an amazing time on this TV show. Uh, I'm looking, you know, to do even more. Thank you, Jesus, for this one. And I'm looking to do more. That's not bragging. That's, bragging. That's really just stating the fact of what happened. Yes. You cannot wink in the dark. It's not possible. It's not possible. And you expect yeah. people to see <laughs> you. It's not, it's not possible. It's not possible. Sorry, right. before we run, okay, you have a question. Quickly, yes. quickly. I was going to say something. When you think this, um, this is um, a message to the youth out there, what, when do you think is okay for a youth who has a business idea to start personal branding? Before you launch. <laughs> okay. Because your first set of customers, really, are going to be people that know you. And they are going to be patronizing you, not necessarily because of your product, but because of you. Yes. And so if you have good a good brand and remember that i all of what i've said is your brand is who you are it's not packaging it's exactly who you are so good it point. is your skills your experience your ideas your personality your excellence that your you put excellence in, yeah, your expertise, expertise that is your brand so there seems to be lots of fake it till you make it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then, you know, that's that's i don't say wrong. fake it till you make exactly. it i say be it <laughs> till you make until it until they see you are in yeah. 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 exactly so it's, don't, it's don't really before it. you launch that idea let people know who you are and they know mm. i don't know why you're if you sell me tea i will buy it have you heard mm. this quote before somebody <laughs> says well i don't know whatever it is but if it is kemi that is doing it okay. i am okay. buying exactly buying. that yes. is uh, what's it called your equity exactly. that's your brand equity exactly. that you have your personal exactly. brand exactly. equity you know exactly. just quickly before we run up because we really <laughs> ran out of time uh, what exactly would you advise someone that has failed you know like you know because they always say first impression matters a lot and the person has the first impression was really, really bad. You know, how would that person get off and just, you know, fix it? Build new track record. That's what it is. And acknowledge, I think, acknowledge that, you know, the first time around was a flop. A flop. And that speaks to your character. Exactly. Well. You're, you're being authentic. Absolutely. I said, okay, I don't think this worked out. I'm trying again. And this is why it's important to have sponsors and people who believe in you. They will take another chance on you. And even if you cannot launch out based on your own, you know, failed brand equity, building on their own social capital, you can make a recovery. It will be hard, though, yeah. but it is possible. Awesome. It is very possible. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much. Well, Thank you, ladies. For whoever that is out there that needed that, it's possible for you to build your brand again, even, even if, if you, you failed. failed. Then for those that want to start off, make sure you are starting and you're starting well. Put in excellence. Everything she said, you must know your audience. Put in excellence. And thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. All right, so when we return, we'll have our next guest on set. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.